Well, thank you very much. I'm honored to speak at the ICIM conference. And um, I'm Hervasio Lamas. I've been the principal investigator of the NIH-sponsored trials to assess chelation therapy. The first trial ran for 10 years and finished in 2012. Uh, the second one uh, started in 2016, and we're almost halfway through our enrollment phase. So what's new? Well, what's new, I think, is that we are being very successful in enrollment. Um, what's new is that uh, the conventional cardiology community is uh, beginning to recognize that chelation of toxic heavy metals may, in fact, uh, be the next frontier in managing cardiovascular risk factors. What's new is that in 2018, there were three key seminal papers published, epidemiologic papers, but published one paper showing that there are about 250,000 excess cardiovascular deaths due to low-level lead intoxication that all of us are exposed to in the United States annually. The next paper, looking at hundreds of thousands of patients involved in meta-analyses and concluding that lead and cadmium are two powerful risk factors for atherosclerotic disease. And the third paper with similar methodology showing that cadmium is the metal that is uh, most predictive of peripheral artery disease. And with that in mind, um, we had started a small study of patients with critical limb ischemia, presented uh, initial results at the American Heart Association just last month. And the results are spectacular. And so those are, it's only 10 patients. It is something that chelation practitioners are the ones that told me to study this. So I'm the guy that's going to the masters uh, to see what I learned. And if you can learn something from me, I'll be very happy. Um, but I am there to learn from you and show you some new data and show you how we are moving into um, cardiology, cardiovascular medicine, and diabetes management. The most surprising thing for me um, that I'm going to be discussing is that I have been able to save limbs that were scheduled for amputation. I've had the surgeon who had scheduled the patient for amputation come back to me, come into my office, and tell me that he believes in chelation therapy. So, this is really um, extraordinary. And among these extraordinary uh, uh, bits are patients, one of the patients who was scheduled for an amputation came from my hospital, from the Brigham and Women's Hospital. And he just came to see me, but just by chance, because I'm the Brigham guy in Miami. And he had severe peripheral artery disease at a time when I was recruiting patients for a peripheral artery disease study. He improved tremendously. I think that the, the takeaways are going to be um, sort of the clinical use of chelation, um, the um, how ubiquitous uh, toxic metal um, intoxication is in uh, the age range of cardiovascular patients, um, how the response of patients who have diabetes appears to be so much greater than the response of the non-diabetics, and, um, and really encouragement that uh, what they are doing has a scientific basis, uh, but that before it can really be practiced, built to insurance, and become mainstream, we need to finish one or two more studies. Uh, hopefully, TAC2 will bring us across the finish line. You know, I would say that learning about chelation is a reason to attend. And what I will show will be the, an efficient, concentrated, scientific talk on clinical results in chelation therapy. I'm not going to go through a whole lot of biochemical nonsense because mostly I don't understand it and because you can always get a biochemist to tell you what you want to hear. I'm just going to show that we were able to save lives 
and it looks like we're going to be able to save limbs. And that's extraordinary. And if it isn't so, if I don't feel that the proof is really there, you'll know exactly what level of evidence I think we're at and where we need to be going. I look forward to seeing you there, and I look forward to learning from you.